more than 3,000 years of history obliterated in seconds. ISIS has released new pictures showing destruction in the ancient city of Palmyra in Syria. ISIS is taking a hammer to history. This video was released by ISIS. It purports to show the radicals destroying Nimrud, one of the most important archaeological sites in Iraq. Explosives being carried out inside, being set around the walls of the temple, the large explosion, and then rubble. It's said that those who will not learn from history's lessons are doomed to repeat its mistakes. So what hope then can the future possibly have if the history of the world is erased? Hi, I'm Brian Pope. I'm the executive director and founder of The Ark Project. The Ark Project is a nonprofit that I founded in the hopes of preserving, protecting, archiving, and restoring cultural heritage wherever it was endangered. People have asked us why we are spending so much of our time and resources on Palmyra. For over a thousand years, it was a truly multicultural society that tolerated differences in race, religion, and language. And they managed this for over a thousand years. And so I can't help thinking that Palmyra is more relevant now than it possibly was even then. In 2015, ISIS tragically destroyed many of these architectural and ancient sites that represent this oasis of multiculturalism. One of the things that I really enjoyed about Palmyra in terms of studying the history of it was that it really actually influenced this country as well. Palmyra was a major crossroads for goods, ideas. It allowed for all of these different cultures to interact. In fact, they had to interact in order for it to even exist. You know, there there comes a point at which the personal outrage that you feel reading these headlines, one after the other, simply becomes too much. And that's what it was like for me. It was almost an epiphany, you know, I just suddenly realized that not only was I capable of doing something about this, I sort of felt that I had to. And to some degree, I think that all of us are obligated to do something about this. It's kind of mind-blowing when you think that history is very close to reaching a point in which forgetting something will not even be possible. But right now we're in a sensitive interim period. It's, it's a tough and awkward time for our civilization and that's why my organization, The Ark Project, and other uh, very caring people in uh, many different fields are trying very, very hard to stop the degradation and loss of culture at this period when we can actually lose things permanently still. One of the aspects of what we've achieved that I'm most proud of is the concept of crowdsourced photogrammetry. So photogrammetry um, is the process of taking multiple images, often thousands of images, of a given object or environment. From these images you can recreate that object or environment. You're ultimately using your camera as a 3D scanner. Brian wanted to see if it was possible at all to do crowdsource photogrammetry. First we started experimenting with trying to combine images from different environments and when we realized that we could actually get it to solve, um, it was a big eureka moment. You know, we realized that you could, you know, take different pictures from a completely different point in time and recreate something that doesn't exist anymore. And this was amazing. You know, it wasn't just a matter of going out and shooting something you already knew existed. You could basically go back in time and you could create something that, that no longer existed in a realistic form. I realized that sort of the missing link in preserving and archiving and restoring cultural heritage was human involvement, individual citizen involvement. What we did is went online to uh, different image source sites and found people that had posted creative common images that we could download of these specific sites and then reproject the textures from those images that we collected back onto the, the model itself to make it look um, as photorealistic as possible. Right now, the preservation and, and guardianship, really, of cultural heritage is largely in the hands of academics and large institutions. And that's great, that's fantastic, but it's not enough. There isn't time to wait 
for institutions and budgets to do the work that needs to be done before we lose places like Palmyra. So one of our educational efforts is to teach everyone how to do photogrammetry. We're going to be able to teach people how to use their iPhone or their own consumer camera to take photos, upload them to our site or other sites that are doing this kind of work. What the ARC project is doing is also working with museums and other organizations to preserve cultural heritage artifacts. That's why creating these archives is only the beginning. Once a 3D model is created, then the ARC project's job is to proselytize that culture, communicate about it in such a way that it can be used for education, for artistic enjoyment, and uh, experienced through other groundbreaking, awesome, incredible technologies that are changing our lives right now, like virtual reality and augmented reality. We're using these technologies not just for games now, but organizations like mine, I'm really, really proud to say, are at the forefront of doing something beautiful with our work in VR to communicate, to educate, and even to activate. Because we do hope to activate citizen scientists, all of you, tourists, anyone who's watching this video right now could become an integral and priceless part of the global collective memory. We're able to actually capture, um, you know, details of the, the different uh, carvings on it and uh, tile structures. Um, so to, to go into virtual reality and, and walk around it, I always kind of get the tingles when, when I go in there just because it's bittersweet ultimately um, because it's, it's not there anymore and yet it's right in front of me. Part of the emotional experience of VR is to be able to roam these ruins or these areas um, and interact with them in a way that I think people are a bit surprised at. Part of the enjoyment is being able to see that people's emotional wall is brought down. When people first experience the Palmyra recreation in virtual reality, there are different emotional responses that you get. No matter what emotion they, they feel, no matter what their experience is like, it's pretty much uniform that having experienced walking on the stones of a dead but hopefully reborn site that represents some of humanity's greatest moments, people just get charged up. They want to do something, you know? They, they, they want to be a part of it. So when we embarked about a year ago to preserve Palmyra, we never knew that we would be able to take it as far as we have. But we realized how much further we have to go. One of the major points behind doing a version two of Palmyra is to generate a level of detail that is so fine, so exacting, that should the World Heritage Community decide to rebuild Palmyra at some point in the future, whenever this horrible war is over, and that culture is able to begin healing, this level of detail would allow uh, archaeologists and restorers to regenerate Palmyra, to replace at least some of what ISIS tried to destroy. The ARC project has been super fortunate to have as one of its best friends the brilliant artist Chris Cooksey. Chris does these really beautiful mashup models, uh, almost infinitely detailed, really gorgeous provocative, um, sometimes even disturbing works of art that really spoke to uh, the ARC Project's mission. As part of this Kickstarter campaign, Chris has donated several of his sculptures, which we have then done extensive, mind-bending photography on um, in excess of 800, 900, 1,000 photos per model, I believe, to generate these hyper-detailed models which we are then now able to 3D print, and Chris has very, very generously let us do limited reproductions of from our own in-house 3D printer. That then gives us the ability to bring these sculptures to you. One of the things that was amazing for me for the first time was taking some of his, you know, his really complex work and then blowing it up to the size of a, a monument and being able to walk around it and literally walk inside and around uh, this beautiful work of art um, and you just experienced it in so much more detail. You're actually seeing exactly the techniques that we are using to archive, preserve and repair 
art and cultural objects and artifacts. This is proof that the work that we're doing and the technologies that we're using to get there are definitely on the right path. People can walk around in, in places that um, don't exist anymore, they're just rubble. We want to put this in the hands of everybody and we find that photogrammetry is a way of doing that. A message to, to ISIS that they can't destroy things, that you know we will resurrect these things. If we can experience our own history as if it were happening yesterday, then we won't forget it. And then history's lessons become infinitely more valuable. And that's when the future starts to, starts to look bright. At least that's our hope. And that's our mission. And we could use some help.